So I'm going to call to order the Conway uh, Select Board meeting of December 21st, uh, Solstice Day. Uh, it's uh, 6.03 p.m. Uh, by Zoom, as usual, these meetings are always accessible on the either on channel 23 or 12 <laughs> or through uh, fiber, uh, video on demand on our FCAT Media YouTube channel. So they're always there. So we have uh, minutes of the last meeting. Uh, did everybody read the minutes? Yeah, they're great. Mm -hmm. they, they were good. Reminded me of a couple of things I'm hoping we can talk about today, too, like Erica's visit with Ron that I don't know if that happened. Which it did not happen, but we can. <laughs> That's OK. But it just reminded me of things like that or where Ron was going to meet with Peter Engelman. And I don't know what happened with that. But anyway, so. No, I think, uh, yeah, I didn't get in touch with Peter Engelman to, to let him know yet. So, OK. So anyway, so those are our meetings. So I'm going to make a motion that we accept the minutes. Second. Okay. OK, uh, and we'll all say aye. Aye. And, and they are accepted. OK, we had three warrants. Uh, approved. They're even approved. approved. They're approved. <laughs> oh, accepted and approved. You're right. OK, we have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant, 507,554 and 68 cents. A payroll warrant for $106,783.07. And a payroll deduction warrant for $26,600. And 41 cents. So I'm going to make a motion that we accept those warrants. Yeah, just, just to let you know, I, I did have a couple of questions about some of that. And I did already go down to the town hall an hour ago just to look at the receipts because the, the snowplow stuff seemed to cost a lot for me. But the receipts sort of spelled out. You know, I didn't I didn't know. I don't know how much that stuff should cost, but um, <laughs> that that stuff is really expensive. And um, you can see why. And, and so, some of those old trucks we were hoping to replace uh, are getting old and falling apart. Yeah, yeah, but um, so yeah. yeah, so yeah, I'll second your motion and I'll vote yes. Okay, so <laughs> uh, well, I'll vote yes too. All Let's right, come. Erica, am I hearing a yes? Yes, I and I just I had to say I'm, I just had my camera off because my Zoom has been super spotty today, and I think it's because I have all of my kids home, like from college, and everyone is. <laughs> The Wi-Fi is is being taxed. It's <laughs> so. okay. I can see your name. It looks perfect. Yeah, so I'm here. <laughs> so we uh, we've accepted the warrants. Uh, meetings attended by select board members. So Erica, you're up first. So I attended the uh, meeting of the Life Path uh, Age Friendly Communities Steering Committee, um, and it was basically just sort of a that was the initial meeting of all the people who were involved in that project. Um, and the next steps are, um, let me just look at my notes here. Uh, yeah, so the next step is for, um, so Noor, who we met um, a couple meetings ago, um, he's gonna continue to meet with local area select boards uh, to get people to sign onto the project. Um, and um, basically, you know, continue with the original proposal that they put forward. Great. And then, and also, so one of, one of the main, the, the other thing too, is that one of the main points of that is to provide age and dementia related training to local communities. It's not totally clear how that's going to happen, but that seems like that's um, sort of a big thrust of the project. Dementia related training. Sounds good to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how about you, Phil? Yeah. How about me? Um, so yeah, so our select board meeting was the seventh. So the eighth, the eighth was a frontier regional uh, committee meeting at seven o'clock, um, which dealt, of course, with the uh, impending closure of the school due to most of our benchmarks having been blasted through. Um, uh, uh, so so, yeah. And then the the ninth Wednesday, the ninth was a uh, joint board of health conference call. Um, the 10th was a formal meeting of the Board of Health um, with a nice, nice hundred people or so dialing in. Um, uh, that was the, the four town boards of health, the, right? That was the four town Board of Health Select Board and School Committee, which is it's just lovely when you have something like 50 people on the meeting that vote. So it's um, 
<laughs> but but uh, you know the, the interesting thing about all this is you you remember from a few weeks ago my complaint that the select that that the boards of health sort of decided to close or the week after Thanksgiving um, without reference to any metrics, and so now it was the school that really decided to enforce their metrics and close. And at the board of health meeting, the board of health was like, why did you close? And it was because, because it was the metrics that we all agreed upon based on the science, the data, the nursing, et cetera, et cetera. And the, um, and so the, the board of health strongly recommends that, uh, th that we revisit the, all the metrics because those metrics were adopted back in August. And since then we've learned so much about, the COVID um, and how it affects our communities. And specifically, um, you know, the, the, that there can be a certain level of COVID in your community and yet it can be completely separate and apart from the school. And so um, we can't have these benchmarks that with just a handful of people in each town get, get you know, get a positive diagnosis. We automatically close the schools reg regardless of those people's uh, relationship with anybody in, involved in the school. And in, in fact, there have been a several cases, positive cases in the schools, but, and, and one of those was an asymptomatic um, for multiple weeks and, and there was no transmission in the school. Hmm. Um, so, so the, the, you know, we, we, we closed it because um, for, 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 for a couple of days there, we couldn't tell where the cases were coming from but we did know that they were not coming from the school. And so we're going to revisit. Now we have a big joint meeting tomorrow night and we're going to, uh, with all the nurse, the, the County health people, and we're going to revisit the issue of metrics. And we've been sitting down with our union uh, the past couple of days to revisit the metrics as well, because it doesn't work if your employees uh, say it doesn't work. So, how long did it take you to come up with a metric last time? Uh, yeah, it it seemed like forever. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But multiple meet, like four or five full yeah. blown school committee meetings, each with hundreds of people, um, and each with like fifty fifty divisions with like people tearfully, tearfully, emotionally backing their specific position. It was nuts. The whole thing this year has just been so crazy. Um, the the fifteenth was a Conway School Committee meeting to ratify all the changes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, yeah, and then it, during that, I've had multiple um, meetings with the Williamstown folks on the carbon credit project. We have a, an RFP right now that is in the drafting discussion phases, and if if you are a a uh, landowner of a hundred acres or more in Conway, the chances are already pretty good that I've spoken to you in the past couple of weeks. Um, but we're having a really good feedback, multiple, multiple people saying they're really interested in it. So um, we're already up past the target goal, which is really good. That's great. Um, so that's, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. That's my answer to that question. <laughs> great. Um, well, I only had a few meetings, but we did have a conservation commission meeting and there's a little bit of work, not much. We had another solar site visit. That's our last solar site visit to Southern Conway. And I've mentioned this a couple times, but it is possible to see the solar panels from at least one of the neighbor's homes that's down below the solar site. And in our bylaws, it says you can't they have to be shielded from site. And so we're in the midst now of talking to the developer about what they have to do to shield them. So, so and, uh, I, I, this is on the agenda too, right? This is on the agenda. I, I didn't think it was, but. All right. So, so then my question, you know, any, any reason why it took so long for everybody to, because Planting trees in the middle of winter is a really um, difficult, and uh, spring is not good. You want to plant your trees in the fall. Well, the neighbors are happy to not deal with it, and it won't be trees that get planted. It. It'll be some kind of hedges. But yeah, Ar arborvitae is the, always the low cost solution to these things. Well, we've asked the solar developer to give us a, their plan of how they're going to solve this. They yeah they they always end up at arborvitae. It's the most 
<laughs> the most tags for the least money. Great. Uh, and we, Tom and I had a phone, a, a Zoom call with a fellow named Mick from the MMA who wanted to talk about, uh, we're talking about, about uh, uh, health insurance for folks that are over 70. We have a couple, we have a policeman and a fireman who are over 70 and, and, and uh, there's a question of whether they can be covered by our current insurance policy. So, so we're looking at a, a, a separate policy for them. And we've had a couple of cable meetings that are leading up to the cable meeting we're going to have momentarily. So that's it for me. I suspect we have no public comments. And so, so Tom, how do we officially call the hearing to order here? I don't see Bill yet. Um, I think you can just state that it's 615 and as per the advertisement we're starting the uh the cable hearing so stated uh it is 6 15 and uh let's start the cable hearing so on the call you will see we we have uh we have ron hawks and we have uh john barkin and i'm not sure if bill is on here or not right now i don't see him on my Zoom screen, um, who have put in an immense amount of time working on our, our cable license. And we'll also see um, uh, Eileen from Comcast, who came to our hearing that was a few months ago. And, and here we are um, right near the, uh, the end of our negotiation. And so we, we gave Eileen a copy of our final license and she is looking it over and having the folks at Comcast look it over. But I wanted to give Phil, you or Erica a chance if you have any questions or, uh, you know, or Eileen, if you could talk about what the last few issues were that we resolved and we think we might have resolved some today. I, I could lay them out too if you'd like, but. Yeah, so why don't, maybe you should just lay them out for the committee and then I can join in. Great. Well, one of the big things that we always talk about in the license is any any work or any changes to the way the 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 Comcast plant is set up. The Comcast wiring is all set up, and and the important one of the things that we've been looking at is expanding Comcast so that we can, for one thing, broadcast live out of Conway. Right now, we can't broadcast live out of Conway. Um, we we generally have people come in. Hi, Bill. Uh, so this is Bill Solomon, who's our lawyer, who's also been attending all of our meetings. Uh, we've all been spending a lot of time together. So, so we've been trying to figure out how to broadcast live out of Conway so that our, our select board meetings could be broadcast. Now, once we started doing this nine months ago using the, during the pandemic and using Zoom, these are actually being broadcast as live as this actually is. We just put our Zoom uh, recording up on uh, you know, on our on our channel, and people can watch this Zoom meeting live. But once we go back to in-person meetings where we have cameras, and or when we have a hearing over in town hall, we can't watch those live. So we have to record those and then hoof that tape down to FCAT where they where they process it and they put it up on the server, and it's a day or two until it's visible. And so we'd really rather they were live. So we've been spending a lot of time with Comcast trying to decide what would it take to do that and how, and then who would pay for it. And we've had a number of designs. Um, and this is Bill Arduzer, who also is on the uh, cable committee. Um, so we've gone through a lot of designs uh, with Comcast, looking at various ways of doing it. And we finally came to an agreement with them over, over the license and how to do it. And then, and how much they're going to pay towards it, and how much we're going to pay towards it. And so, this is going to be adding a fiber optic line that's going to go from town office to town hall, um, adding the uh, adding all the electronics to be able to to transmit a camera from town hall over to town office, um, and choose whether you want the camera from town office or town hall to transmit Funny. its uh, its this content down down to the Deerfield server and then bring it up from the Deerfield server 
um, yeah. directly to the head end down in down in Deerfield. Hey. Mm -hmm. none, of, none of which we can do today. <laughs> so, so we've spent a lot of time trying to figure all that out, and we finally come to an agreement. And uh, and the very last thing that we were working on would be that Comcast wanted to make sure uh, it had to do with the ownership of the equipment, and it, and we think that 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 we're more than happy to let Comcast own the equipment, and then they will maintain it, and they'll re they'll fix it when it breaks, and 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 we're happy to pay for it as long as as long as it all works. So. Oh yeah, well, just just Bob, if I could just say sure. you're all like I just don't want to mis mislead. We're 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 paying for. Uh, as you said, uh, certain equipment that's going to be Comcast owned. And then when they own it, maintain it, repair it, and if necessary, replace it, those costs are theirs. So I, I know you, you understood that, yeah, but just yeah. for the board that, that, so we're, we're paying uh, for the initial cost of certain equipment um, as exchange for the full deal, which includes capital dollars. Now, sometimes the way this happens is that Comcast doesn't take money from the town, but they they put all of that all of the expense of it on the on the subscribers. You know, in other words, they charge so much per subscriber per month, and the subscribers end up paying for all of that equipment. And we want to keep the rates here in Conway really low. We we have not been um, we have not been paying FCAT all of the money that we've been getting from Comcast and we have, so we have a pool of savings that we can use to pay for this equipment in addition to what Comcast is going to give us as part of this license. And so it won't, it's not going to cost the town any money, but we would rather not have the subscribers in Conway pay either. So. So Bob, we're going to pay for the equipment up front, but ultimately it's Comcast who owns it and is responsible for the maintenance. That's right. Yep. Okay. Yep. Repair maintenance, maintenance repair, and if needed, if necessary, to replace it. So okay. that if at one point they decide they rather than repair it, they're going to replace it. That's that's up to them. That's their responsibility. That's right. So so I got sort of a question. You know, the, the way I framed all all Comcast sort of related issues was uh, or Comcast this contract was, was sort of um, in the context of our neighboring towns that are part of FCAT with us the Sunderland, Waitley, Deerfield, and how they have enjoyed higher level of services or benefits from their relationship with Comcast than we have historically. And then, and, and I remember at the last meeting, you sort of set out the different areas that they get more than we do. Um, or this is my, my interpretation of what you said as well. Um, so, and, and so what, what I'm interested in, in, in what areas have we closed the gap and in what areas do they still get more than we do? And, and, and I, I can answer that, Bob, if you like. Sure. All right. Good. So the and part of the gap is was a question of when the licenses came due. So that you know the Deerfield and Sunderland, my involvement was first, and then Conway, but then Deerfield and Sunderland went again. So some of the gap, a large part of it, is just because we're now doing the renewal that, that is the equivalent of the 2015 renewal that Deerfield and, and Sunderland and Waitley did. So it's, it's, it's much a question of timing, but, but right. great question, Phil, really uh, goes to the essence of, the, of your job. Um, so the percentage of gross revenue, which is uh, for the, the franchise fee for PEG access to operating support, uh, that that's going uh, from I think it's four point five now or four four point to it's four point eight four four percent to four point right eight percent, and if I have that right, I can look. And that's the right. same as Deerfield and Sunderland, so it'll be uh, total equivalents there. Uh, the capital dollars uh, on a sort of a per subscriber basis are going to be somewhere between Deerfield and Sunderland. Because Deerfield and Sunderland are a little different because Deerfield has more subscribers. So uh, the, the per subscriber cap peg capital amount is a little different. So ours is basically equivalent uh, to, uh, to Deerfield and Sunderland. And all of those numbers are, are I think, a, a very good number, but significantly higher than most of Western Massachusetts, if you don't count Amherst and, and Northampton. So that it's a very, very strong number. I think a good number. 
uh, because of the nature of how the committee fought here and for, for a good license, just like Eileen represented uh, Comcast well. So the capital dollar is equivalent to those two licenses. So then the only difference would be, as Bob described, is that the question of, well, the, the cost of the, um, of, the, of the Comcast electronics. There's some equipment that FCAT will do, but the Comcast encoders and transmitters, how is that cost paid for? Because if, if Comcast, you know, quote, has the cost, they can, quote, pass it through to uh, Conway subscribers. Now, in a world where the, there is cable competition, which you didn't have an opportunity to have here, you don't have Verizon Fios, then, you know, then I think the decision would have been different because then people can choose where they go. There's some level of competition. But in a world where there's one cable company, albeit there are other video choices, but one cable company, uh, it was decided that rather than use the uh, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley model of Comcast paying and they're charging their subscribers. Uh, instead, that it, the, the Bob said it would be paid for by, <clears throat> in effect, the, this money that comes from Comcast, both past and present. Uh, I consider it really the, the, the present. So with that, the capital number, which is thirty-two thousand dollars, half of which is paid up front, and the other half over the next uh, nine years. That, together with the savings you have, would be used. So that's a difference, and it was a uh, it's sort of a policy decision by the committee. Obviously, it was Comcast preference. And given the importance which the committee and Bob focused on of making sure that this Conway programming could go from the town hall, could get to, most importantly, to FCAT, be incorporated into or, or, or put subtitles on or headings or uh, edit it and then go from FCAT back to the uh, – uh, Comcast head end, all with a fiber signal, clear sound and clear picture. That was so important that the determination was made given some of the savings and given the capital number, which uh, we, uh, credit to Eileen for fighting, you know, uh, uh, representing her, her company well, but the committee was adamant about what that capital number needed to be, that it was 32,000, far in excess of what Comcast would have liked to pay, but, but they realized, and to their credit, it was needed here because they were, they appreciate that, that, that the town, final point, has more subscribers than ever before because of the build out. And it's a town that really cares about community television. So uh, the answer is there, the licenses are for all practical purposes the same, except for that policy value choice that was made. All right. That's, that's significant progress. So, yes. Um, so that's, that's good. Just so that you know, I would have backed you all the way to fight as much as you could for full and total equality well and so you know that the the board's position at the last at that last meeting was was clearly expressed to comcast who understood that uh but but at the end of the day to give credit to comcast that you know yes it's a large company but you know they have folks like eileen who are local representatives who come to town hall who know where the cameras are who know where the lines are who meet with us i always say if we ask google or facebook or um, uh, uh, you know, Apple or Amazon to come to town hall, we wouldn't see them. So it's because this company, local roots were roots were local. They appreciate uh, uh, the local relationship. They have government affairs managers. They appreciate community television. While it's it's always uh, a, a battle uh, over over the the very final issues, uh, they came to the table. But the board's position would, played a large role in making sure that, that it just made sense to figure this out rather than fight about it. So we, we thank you for that. And that's very sincere. But, but Phil, speaking to your issue, I mean, you know, I'm not inviting you to grab your pitchfork and, you know, <laughs> guard the barricades. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, if you want to compare what, what we are getting in Western Mass compared to Eastern Mass, there is a huge difference. And not in the capital, if, but not here though, Bob, to be fair. That the operating of 4.8, not, not, you know, the 0.2 doesn't make a difference really practically. And the capital contribution uh, of, uh, on a per subscriber basis uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a good license in Eastern Mass. So it's, it, it's, it, the answer is not now, but, but that's, that was our challenge is that there are a lot of communities in, East, in Western Mass 
you know, great people, good boards, but they're, you know, they're, they're not prepared to negotiate with a multi-billion dollar company represented well by, by uh, uh, government affairs managers or also attorneys. And so that was what was different here. So our license is equivalent to an East, a good Eastern Massachusetts license, but it wouldn't have been if we had done uh, the, the more typical license in the area. To be fair to those communities, as, and, and Eileen knows this, that the Cable Act provides that the company should meet the future cable-related community needs and interests. There are communities that don't prioritize this, that don't think community programming is important. And that's not Conway. And one very final point, I mentioned this earlier and I mentioned before the committee and Bob, working across the Commonwealth, if I can show you a community that has good community television, that has connects the, the public to the government, community groups to the public. And I'll show you that community and it's community where, where government functions well, where there's a good local economy, where the arts and cultures thrive. And there's a direct correlation between the two, if not relationship. And I think one of the reasons we have a, a Eastern Mass equivalent license here, or Central Mass, particularly Eastern, is because of the importance of community television, as was shown at the public hearing. As And, and, and Eileen, being connected and, and familiar with the town, particularly with FCAT, uh, understands that this is something the town values. And because of that, we, we were able to convince Eileen to speak to the people she reports to, to get to a license that works. And I, 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 I thank her and appreciate that effort. A number of years ago, Comcast had their their uh, employees care day take place at the Apex Orchard right up in Shelburne. And a couple hundred Comcast employees all came and grabbed paintbrushes and painted picnic tables and, and uh, you know, restrung all kinds of, uh, maybe you fixed a lot of repair work for the uh, YMCA's Apex Orchard. It was Apex Summer Camp. How do we suck? How do we suck? Can we put that in the agreement that Conway's got that 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 Comcast has got to do one of those employee days in our town? We could ask. <laughs> All right, Ali's here. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can you do that for us? All you've got to do is get me a site you guys want to have it at. We can always look into it. We're always mm -hmm. sites to go to. Good. So, absolutely. Let me know, and I'll do what I can. Okay. okay, I will. Thank you. So another person that's on the call, you see Chris Collins' name. I don't know if you know Chris. Chris is the manager of our FCAT studio. And, uh, and, and so a lot, all of this work that we're doing is making more work for Chris. But, but uh, nobody supports public access television as much as Chris does. So thank you, Chris. This is great. Happy to, happy to do that work. Yeah. So we think we're very, very close. I, we're not. We're not telling you we're going to sign this agreement today. Uh, we made a couple changes based upon the meeting we had earlier today. Eileen's going to take that back, uh, and and I think we're you know we're we're almost there. But but looking at where we were ten years ago, when l less than half of Conway was able to get Comcast at all, and you know Conway had about three hundred subscribers. And uh, and now we're I think around seven or five, oh, 500, well, 500, yep, so 500 subscribers, and uh, and there are people in Conway that are still using DSL. It's 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 possible, but that's good. We're only a, what do we got? Eight hundred and sixty, eight hundred and fifty households. Home. Like yep. That? Yeah. I was on DSL until a year ago. Yeah, DSL works, and the, if you're in the middle of town, it's if possible. You're very close to the station. Yes, it's <laughs> right. Right. Well, that's, I mean, it seems like you made progress. Seems like but you made progress. DSL doesn't get you cable. It doesn't get, uh, right. it, it doesn't get, you know, FCAT, yep. you know, which, which yep. uh, you know, Chris, you know, his whole, his whole life now is, is, is producing good television. Turn in and watch channel 12 sometime to have your kids watch. They have great tele, uh, kids uh, programming for kids all day long. In addition to, you know, government programming. It's, it's really excellent. It is. It is. So, so are we all good? Is that I mean, you know, we didn't, I didn't really imagine we would have a lot of people from the public here. A lot of people came out, mostly wanted to talk about price. And that's always the sticky issue. And it's not covered by our franchise agreement. And, you know, it's not that Comcast is doesn't care about price, but it's it, it's it's not something that the federal government has put into the our license. Is what, what they charge. 
and it, are their their license that they have with Conway is not exclusive. Any other any other company, cable company, could come and move into town. It's not a profitable enough business that generally two companies can survive in a town. And I can't see it happening. And and you know, I think we are just very fortunate to to have Comcast as opposed to building our own, like they're doing in Asheville or they're doing in Coal Rain, where they're they're they, you know they have to put up two million dollars or more, and they're trying to build their own cable system, their their, their own inter, internet system, no cable, their own internet system. And you I know. remember when you yourself were Mister Wired West. Wired West, yeah. And 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 the the state decided that companies uh, the towns that had cable franchises like Conway, the state helped build out those cities uh, those towns to mostly almost one hundred percent. Yeah. And, and so and Comcast paid a big piece of that too, so, and I think that was very fortunate. Mm -hmm. Wired West, yeah. Oh. Well, it's good. Yeah, I mean, I'm a hardworking committee too. I mean, this this stuff is tough road to hoe. So, so the, the, our committee is looking forward to having time off and 10 years yeah. from now, we're going to be looking for more people to jump on this committee again. And it'll be time to do a new agreement. I'm afraid Bill's going to be retired by then. So let me so. up for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to dye my hair. <laughs> well, we don't have a pandemic. We can meet in person and you can come back out and buy sausage at Pekarski's. Yeah, yeah I'm, all, I'm I, I, and I just uh, equal opportunity. I, I go. I always forget the name of uh, the Maple Place with Gene. Uh, Baker Sugar House. No, no not Boyden Baker Sugar um, House. Boyden's. Boyden's. Yeah. Yes, Boyden's. Yes, I have a, a, a happy customer for many years. <laughs> yeah. I'm still waiting for cookies. Me too. Well, you know, it's not too late, guys. <laughs> Christmas Eve. I'll bring them. I, I just made them the butter cookies. So. <laughs> Bill keeps promising us cookies, but then we. My, um, I just don't, that's right. My uncle. Um, Whose whose um, mother was the uh, originator of that recipe from from Germany? Uh, my uncle just turned a hundred. Wow! Mm. Healthy cookies. That's I right. Guess. It must be the butter. <laughs> butter, and, be. butter, butter and sugar <laughs> make the eight makes butter and sugar makes the world go round. That's right. That's about it. And a little vanilla. If more you, if butter, you more better. If you can afford the vanilla, you're 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 an exclusive company. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all. Um, thank I, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, uh, we still, as Bob said, have some language issues. Uh, on the, the just to speaking to the board, that there are certain language issues that I feel we have to have, and we're not going to be able to compromise. But the more we are, the things we can. But and, and fundamental issues uh, that are importance, and we, we're always trying to be fair, but. We need to protect the interest uh, going forward, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to get the draft back from uh, from Eileen and Comcast, and uh, you know without hopefully too many changes, we'll see. Um, and uh, and we've already had some discussions and some additional issues today and once before that I think are going to put us in good stead. So now it's a question of getting the license done. I don't have anything in there that's abnormal, that's not uh, reasonable and normal, but we'll see what they come back with. And Eileen and I will uh, work well together, and we'll. We'll, we'll work those out uh, as long as they don't they, they don't violate a sense of, of, of fairness as we see it and and reasonless. So thank you. So hey. committee, thanks for joining us, Eileen. Thank right. you. You're very welcome. My pleasure. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Let everybody bye, else leave. Just uh, just you guys. So. Yep. <laughs> So we have some old business. What do we have here? Uh, Tom, you're going to, how's the budget update? Yeah, I just wanted to go over the uh, budget schedule. Hope you all had a chance to look at that. It's uh, very much like it was last year. Um, the dates changed. Uh, I think I got all the uh, Monday holidays in there. And uh, there, there was uh, one change that uh, Lee wanted the assessors to come a little bit later. Um, so uh, I made that change, and and I think that was the only one. And so this is, uh, you know, the usual round of hearing what people are proposing for their budget. People's budgets are due the end of this week, um, and there's kind of an extra week in there just in case they didn't get their budgets in. But uh, I hope to have um, I hope to have 
by far the majority of the budget's in by uh, by Thursday, actually. So um, starting off with highway, then public safety, and uh, going on from there. If anybody has any comments or questions, uh, please do let me know. That's really all I have. I can't wait. <laughs> I mean, I, I was just just from hearing just from hearing, I was a little bit concerned about sort of people thinking that they needed to come up with sort of real starvation budgets and leaving next year's budget to then uh, be bigger than it would be if they weren't doing such a conservative starvation budget this year. So that's. Yeah, I did not send out any special instructions. I think that people, in my experience here, since I've gotten here, is that people give reasonable estimates for things. And, um, you know, so we, we didn't actually gain a heck of a lot through last year's voluntary, you know, budget cuts. Um, it was a certain amount, but it, it wasn't a lot. So my sense is that people are, are going to ask for what they want, what they need. They may try to make up a little bit of what they lost, but that's all going to be reflected and it'll all, um, you know, uh, I should know all of that well in advance of the meetings we have and can communicate that to you. Great. Yep. So that's what, so when do we switch over to every week? Uh, that, that first Monday in January would be the first of those. Ah, yes. All right. Keep you busy during during the dark winter. So, Tom, we didn't approve the stipends last week. Did we put yeah. them off? <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I see it on the agenda, but I I thought we had we had at least talked about it. Oh boy! Did you see Alan's email? No. Uh, yes. You, you, uh, just to answer Bob's question, uh, you did not approve the select board stipends, and so, you know. <laughs> Here's the, here's so, the thing. I, I, yeah, I would advise uh, approving those. Yeah, so so here's the thing. Like we talked about it, and um, but it was not that was not communi It was not communicated to Jan, or Jan didn't know that we had talked about it and that there was an issue. And Jan sent out all the three checks. Yeah, I got a thing in the mail that said. And, I mean, I didn't. Good. I didn't well, check my, you, I got a thing that said I got. Yeah. Paid. <laughs> you deserve that check. Okay. And then I got a thing that said that we're not supposed to get paid. I mean, I and I abstained from the last vote. I wasn't totally clear on what the finance committee was voting on. Yeah. Um, first, it, it's okay that you got the checks. We will have to move a little bit of money at the end of the year. Um, but you know, so what's done is done. Um, and what the finance committee was was voting on was the the original. Um, of what the select board originally approved was, which was to give, um, which was to ask them to uh, res uh, restore the stipend that, that John O'Rourke gave up, um, which would presumably be, be Erica's. And Bob Armstrong also asked that, you know, since FY finances were fine, um, he said, you know, I'd like you to consider giving me my stipend back too. And they declined to do either of those. Um, and I, I'm not going to speak for them. Um, I, but, you know, Alan did write. Um, I saw they had a lively discussion. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I abstained from that vote myself. Like, I just was really, I mean, that must have been a very interesting conversation. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I still think that we should, especially now that they've been given out, that we ought to approve giving them out. And yeah, that was my We can question. deal with what we do about it. <laughs> yeah. There's lots of solutions that we can deal with soon or later. But, but, uh, but so as I know, so I don't know if you have any more to say. Otherwise, I would make a, a motion that we approve. Um, we, 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 uh, we approve the the original, the normal select board stipends. We undo the earlier select board vote. To, I, 
not do this yeah I, I think I think the motion right now is to approve these three nine hundred dollar stipends okay uh, which is a, that's that's the semi-annual payment that have already but that's like money that's already been paid so that was my question I mean yeah. if we decided we weren't yes. going to do those stipends like we've already been paid so where does that money come from and does it have to be given back yeah. Um, well, it it is true that you 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 should approve what was paid, which is the semi-annual nine hundred dollars. Um, at the end of the year, I've spoken with Bob about this, um, and since he had uh, voluntarily decided to give his up, he's willing to pay back the difference um, for what would otherwise send the select board budget into deficit. Then, at the end of the year, by a combined vote of the Select Board and Finance Committee, uh, that money can be moved back into the Select Board account, taking it out of deficit. All right. Okay. I, I mean, I feel like John and I caused this problem, and there isn't much John can do about it. But, but, and, and I originally, and I still believe this was a good faith thing that the board chose to do, or some of us chose to do, feeling bad that we were not giving any raises to any of the town employees. And, and uh, and it unfortunately had this this cascade of unfortunate yeah, things after that. But 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 it, there, it's not difficult to solve. Especially things that can be solved with money are always easy to solve. So it's not a lot of money either. And it's not a lot of money, right? So and and, and we we learned a lesson. I mean, and I we're all willing to say that was that was a mistake that we shouldn't have voted that for those of us who voted for it. So you can smile, Phil. That's okay. But <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. It was a mistake. Yeah. Sorry. Um, all right. So, so moved as to uh, Tom's phraseology or phrasing of it. Okay. okay. I'll second it. And everybody votes aye. I see Phil yep. nodding. Aye. Yep. Yes. I aye. don't see Erica nodding, but I trust that's on there. So, aye. so it's unanimous. So we, we vote to. Uh, or re replace the uh, stipends. Okay. And anything more happening with 69 Main Street? Uh, I, I just need uh, approval to allow um, somebody to go on the uh, site and look around. So Tom, if, if for, you remember, uh, the... remember when I sent him that, the, the, I sent the owner the email and it was based on my conversation with him and, and I said in, in that email, um, you know, we, we need to have people walk on the, the you know, walk about the property and uh, to, to uh, if, if there's any problem with that, to let me know. And he let, he immediately responded with some concerns of his, but he had no problem with that in, in that email. And I think that's a perfect way to leave that issue. Um, Cause we've asked and, uh, and we have a response or, a non-response in this case, which is what well, just as good if you ask me. So, um, yeah. I, do, do, do I have a copy of that email? I I believe you do. I I, I know you do because I I was sending you everything, and I, I know you saw I know you saw his response to it because we've talked about his response to it. Um. Okay. So, Tom, you would recommend we don't call him back up and and make that a request this phil you think it's it's solved yeah 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 i do i think it's in a good place um uh i will i will check to see uh whether the consultants um believe that this covers them because this this is really you know these are people who will be out there walking around and and i'm sure they won't want any confusion Okay, well, so Tom, you'll look for that those emails and and forward them to the consultant. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I I wrote to him, and I'm just reading from the letter. the The next step from the town's yeah. perspective. The the next step from the town's perspective is to do the Section Twenty One E report 
and or the appraisal report for this property. I am advised that these can be done fairly quickly, but to that end, I do request permission from you to allow the necessary people to walk about the property on behalf of the town so that these reports can be written. If there is any problem with that, please let me know. And then he responded, but he didn't have any problem with that. So I, to me, that's asking and getting permission. I, I mean, I'll see whether that's uh, whether the people who actually want to go out there on the property think that this gives them sufficient protection. All right. All right. Okay. I mean, if if not, I I, I I can call the guy again. But I like I like the way this is resolved because there's no chance of getting a no response. If you go knock on the door and say, "Here's a form. Please sign this, uh, releasing liability," you know, whatever. Yeah, you know, then then you can get a no. So yeah. Right now, it's, it's yes. better to get a yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes is the way it's at right now. If you ask me, yes is good. I like yes. Well, it, it, it's not no. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, new business. So we do have a request from the church, from UCC, for to see if we would uh, split the cost of doing some reinforcing work on their behind their foundation wall before they start doing their new foundation work for their new church. Tom, you sent us all a, a, a note about that might be an illegal contribution. Yeah, the, the, the town can't give money to private institutions, especially religious institutions. Ian, it's, a, it's, in the, it's in the Constitution. So actually, this is like a really old discussion that I've been having for 15 years in this town because the Conway Historical Society when I was president of it, was the actual first recipient of CPA monies in the town of Conway. And, and this issue came up right it, then. It's, it's a private organization. And well, and CPA is different. CPA uh, requires an agreement and you're, the town gets something back in return for its uh, giving money to somebody for something it, it's it's a you're, you're you're procuring a service and and there should be a written right. agreement right but the um the the it, it is perfectly legal to give money to churches to if if there is a public purpose up for it and if it is not to support the core functions of that organization we are not supporting, we are not buy, buying Bibles, and we are not supplying, uh, you know, religious iconic, you know, icon, whatever. <clears throat> like, I, I, I definitely have a real issue with, like, sort of ducking out of their question with, with a legal technicality that, that when you read the anti, you know, I'm reading what Tom said, and it, it's not a blanket prohibition. If you look at it, look at what he sent, the third paragraph, the first sentence, the kinds of expenditures barred by the amendment are those that substantially benefit or aid private organizations in a way that is unfair economically or politically. And then you go down a little bit and it says aid includes any grants, contributions or donations by the city to the, to the nonprofits um, that go for the specific purpose of directly supporting or assisting their operations. So that's not what they're asking for. They're saying that there's a specific repair that is necessary to keep the road from collapsing and pe the traveling public from dying. And that because it is a road, they're, they're willing to split the bill with the town. And I'm not, to, to me, the, the real issue is sort of from an engineering perspective is if that wall, you know, to me, that, that wall's several feet away from the edge of the road. There's lots of like earth between there and the wall. And I have a hard time believing that that wall is a necessary support for the road and that that's what this issue should hinge on, that 
um, that 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 you that it it is um, it certainly is not the case that it, there is a blanket prohibition on giving money to an organization that happens to be a church under any and all circumstances. And I, and so to represent it like that, I think is really not accurate. There's a huge you know it has to go to the purpose for which they're organized. It has you can't buy the the, the a religious school. You can't buy the textbooks. Um, for, for students, for, for religious school. But there's a ton of cases in all this that, that, that you know, you, that okay specific grants to churches for landscaping of the front of, the, uh, of a little park that's at the front of the church that the general public would be using on off hours. So all kinds of stuff like that is perfectly fine because it doesn't go to the nature of the churchiness to it. And this is this is the same thing. It is a specific item, specifically tied to road to road safety to the road, which is the property of the town. And so, you know, I, the, the the issue should be we're not convinced that this is necessary. You know, if, if you don't, and that um, you know that it should be a warrant, and that we shouldn't make this type of decision as a select board. I don't, I don't think we can anyway. But that. No, this should be a warrant article. Um, and regardless of whether we th we think it should be or not, they should be encouraged to put it up as a warrant article and make their case to the town. Um, be because it, uh, and, and there's there's a lot of people in town, not a lot of people, but I, I've been having this discussion with Malcolm Course for 15 years. And I know there's several others in town that are just like, oh, the Constitution says it. But there's. There's a ton of cases that have been decided in, in our courts and in our administrative agencies that go out of their way to give money, that, to, to okay money to churches, to property, or as long as a public purpose is being supported, as long as the core functions of the institution are not being supported um, and, and everything. And so that's, this passes constitutional muster, if you ask me. And, and before we're gonna give them uh, a, 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 a sense that we're not going to do this because it's against the law. I'm definitely not comfortable with that. But if you want to do that, then I really would want to insist on on our uh, attorney on our attorney say so that that's what it really says. Oh, absolutely. Because, yeah, um, sure. But, but Phil, I mean, I I think you're. I agree with what you say when you say it's not clear this is necessary for the town to do. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 I mean, every many of the houses in town have, right. you know, if, if, are are near a road and maybe even nearer than the the setback. And when they yeah. those get rebuilt, if you rebuilt that foundation, we can't expect the town to step in and fund that. that work. Like, but but I'd like to know if that's a real concern. I mean, I, you know, I, well, I so know. I was, you know. It, it, Maybe we should. I would love to go and actually look at it. I, I you know, w with Ron sometime, and 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 I mean, Ron does not think that it's a problem. Ron does not think that we need to yeah. help with you know shore up that wall or however you want to phrase it. And I don't. I, well, I don't think it, it's their responsibility to keep it from affecting the road. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, and, and I mean, if, if it does come to, to like safety of the traveling public and, and the whole concept that you can't, you know, you can't get blood from a stone kind of a thing, then at some point it might need to be something that we need to address. But I don't think we're anywhere close to that till we know that it's an actual concern of the towns. So, um, but, but I, but, I, but, I, but I, you know, I, I definitely, <clears throat> I, I try to resist sort of giving answers that are based on legal technicalities. I've always thought that was a bit uh, that we can do better than that. That, that, well, the, well, that the fact that they're a church makes it sticky. I mean, you know, it, there are special provisions having to do with uh, t town money given donated to churches or, or well, what we need is a written agreement by which we get a service for something we're giving them. Well, I don't think we should try to speculate on that now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah the service is the road doesn't collapse. I guess that's what they would say. I don't know. The, but, that's a legal requirement. They, they, 
they they can't do something that would let the road collapse. But, uh, you know, I, I do think that the way that this should be approached for town meeting is by them by way of petition. So, um, and, uh, you know, we can weigh in on the article at the, when it's before us, but I certainly wouldn't want to be the one drafting an article on their behalf, you know, and I, wouldn't, I don't think Tom should be. So, Eric, what do you think? Well, I mean, if this was a private residence and they got a quote of $28,000 to repair the road and they were asking the town to split that cost because, you know, the road is a public good. It's a right of way. Um, I mean, I, I, I would just be concerned about setting a precedent. I mean, yeah. I love that church. I spent a lot of time in that church. <laughs> um, right. But I, yeah, I, I think my concern is, um, is setting a precedent um, of, subsidizing like whether it's religious or not but subsidizing any nonprofit or any non-public um business but i i agree with phil that it, it it feels like this is a bigger issue that the select board can't address that this would be something that would have to come before the town meeting tom do you think we could ask what? the church to send us or have their contractor their engineer send us a better description of why why what they're proposing is going to endanger the road? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'd be happy I, to do that. I mean, that's what Ron is saying. There isn't any danger to the road. That's that's pretty dispositive. I mean, that really is. That's that's a fairly dispositive situation. And at this point, it's on like on the church to like come up with proof otherwise. So, I think that's a reasonable request. Uh, yeah. I, I think that the concern of the town is in the safety of the road. Um, I think that would be the primary consideration that we'd have to take into account. So, yeah, I, I think I'd want to know a little more. From but it, it's still, about. yeah, sorry. It, it, it's still their responsibility to make sure that whatever they do doesn't destroy town property. Right. Okay. Well, I, well, and Ron's view is there isn't much they can do that would hurt the road. I mean, they could undermine the road, but that's they're, they're not proposing to do that. Destroy town property sounds like really, that's like really strong language. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think I, um, yeah, I think I'd want to understand a little bit more. But again, well, like, you know, I, like I've well, that's, been, that's what they're worried about. Um, yeah, so I think you'd want to have some confirmation that this is not something that's going to um, that's not going to affect a town public roadway. And I guess I, I, I mean from from the letter here that I'm reading, I mean it's it's very it's not specific at all. It just says that, like they need to reinforce the foundation. Um, Unmute yourself, Bob. What's that, Phil? I said unmute yourself. No, no, no. I, I muted myself on purpose for a second <laughs> there. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. okay, so so um, I'll, I'll, let me come up with a draft. Um, uh, maybe I can work with Bob on that. Sure. And Ron. But, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we received a request from, um, well, I, ima I imagine from Adam Hines, although it came from a whole series of, of state senators to see if we would sign on to a letter in support of uh, the Office of Rural Policy. Uh, did everybody see that letter? Yeah. You know, I go for the rural policy, so. I'm absolutely in support of an office of rural policy. Yeah. Uh, you know, it sounds, see, this is one of the things, this is one of the little things that they throw, a scrap from the end of the table that they throw in our direction and, and, they, and they pretend that it counts for something. And, you know, 
the rule of pol- we we know what policies we want. We we just want them to fund their actual commitments that they've already made. That's all. That's all I ask for my state. Quit being such a crappy, unpredictable partner. Keep your promises, and and uh, just you know that that's. A lot of work went into writing the rural policy, finding out what they should be. And what I really liked about the rural policies were the number of issues that are common between Western Mass and the Cape, for example. Yes. And and, and a lot of those were kind of new, new new realizing that there's a lot we should be doing together. Yes. Even though we may not think of the Cape as being rural, but we have a lot of the same issues. For sure. We have like a... I, I feel like we also have like a new slate of representative that um, are particularly attuned to Western Massachusetts in a way that other representatives have not been. So I feel like, yeah, like, so maybe it's just like they're throwing us a scrap, but you know, like it's, okay, it's, it's, like, it's, it's incremental, you know, it's like, it, it's what we can get. And that's and- what happens. You know, and the other thing, too, is that these are political positions. So these are just sort of placements for, you know, uh, you know, just party hacks. And that's what we get when when they fill these things up with just these offices are just sort of, you know, the 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 the, the, you know, look, look what party the governor's from, who's you know, who's going to be put in it. The, The 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 people out here that are sort of representative of that political party are are just not they already have too much influence in our public affairs the jay ashers and all these guys that are just oh yeah you know the problem with the schools is the unions have too much power oh the problem with you know and, and they have the i i saw that they sent out a, a, or maybe you sent that out last week bob uh, that one of one of the, the sort of a republican rural group and and i and, and I'm putting two and two together and think that that group is like angling for this sort of prize, you know, the, the, and, and those, those, those uh, proposed solutions are like straight out of the national GOP playbook, except in comfier language, less scary language. But, uh, you know, so I, I, I think you may be, you may be confusing something else with the report of the, um, Rural Policy Advisory Commission. Um, they, they're they're actually really good, and this was this was the the main priority request. You know, it 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 there's and there's more than regional school transportation. Um, we also want full pilot funding, you know, and things like that. And I think the thought was that you know having somebody be the representative of rural interests on Beacon Hill would be a good thing. And, you know, I agree with that. It's just a, it's just a sop, you know, it's great. Yeah. So super woohoo rural interest, still all still massive unfunded mandates, still massive year to year uncertainty. Well, it's, I'm going to well, make that's a motion. what it's supposed to address. <laughs> So, so we've all been heard. So I'm going to make a motion that we approve this letter that, that came asking for our support for the, uh, uh, the Office of Rural Policy. And I think I know I, where people will vote. But I support that. I second it. So, um, uh, I'm, I'm still undecided. I'm going to, so, I'm going to... so a year from now, Phil, we can have this discussion again. And, yeah, and, uh, and we'll see if you were right once again. And, uh, and I'm not saying you're not right or wrong, but I, I don't think we're going to... Think- Change I'll, our minds I'll, here. I'll abstain on this vote, but I, I, I and I'll think about it some more. So there you go. Okay. And uh, and so, so maybe a less ha- controversial letter is uh it would be a, l- a letter thanking the Hatch family for donating the bench. I don't know if you've all seen the bench that's yes. down there in the South River Meadow. It's very nice. Yeah, and there are uh, four letters here because there were four separate family members living in four different places who contributed. So and to the first, they're all the same. And, and to the, to the young family that just moved into Conway a couple months ago that complained to me that the bench was sighted in a wicked patch of poison Ivy and their three children got a terrible poison Ivy infection from walking to the bench. I just want to say that's not the hatch's fault. 
So. <laughs> really needed. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go check out this bench. All right. So I'm going to make a motion that we sign those letters of uh, those letters of thanks to the Hatch family. Yes. Okay. So I'll I'll second it, and I heard a lot of yeses. Yes. Uh, so items not anticipated. We actually have a couple here. Um, so one is a renewing a certificate uh, from the ABCC licensing. Yes, this is an additional, this is something to send into the state. It's not um, Barbara's license, but it's a notification to the state that we did give Barbara her license. Very simple. Uh, I think uh, Louise sent out a copy of it ah, yeah. uh, to you yeah. um, earlier. Now, will, will that get filled out, at least with, with the, the Conway Inn or Barb's name or something? It was, it was, what I got in the mail was completely blank. Is that the way we would sign? Yeah, 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 we can do that. We'll, we'll do that. Okay, great. And uh, oh, oh, and so we also were looking at, oh, so, so let's have a vote. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a motion that we, that we uh, re, re, uh, send in the form for a, the uh, form for a sign, a sign it. That we sign it and send it yeah. in. Yeah, so I want an official vote here, yeah. Second, yes. Yeah, so we just have to go down to town hall and sign? Yes. Like we sign everything? There'll be lots there to sign, I think. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and we, we have a very small contract amendment from FERCOG about the, the payroll uh, software package that they're doing for our, I believe for our accounting software. Uh, did everybody see that note? I did. As soon as I read that it would have no impact on our cost or on our fees, I was like, I'm all for it. <laughs> the, the, I know. The, Actually, I, <laughs> I, like, I read a lot of it, and then I was like, oh, wow. I guess I didn't really need to. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I approve. So I'm, Okay, well, so I'm going to take that as a, a motion, Erica. You're making a motion. Making I'll second motion. your yeah. motion, and we're all saying yes. Yeah. Wonderful. So Tom, how about an update? Sure. Um, in committee news, the Open Space Committee is working on a South River planning process, which is being funded by the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program via the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership. Uh, this, is, this is part of a much larger grant. Uh, some conceptual designs have been made and are being presented to landowners as we speak. Uh, the project will generate a set of pro uh, this project will generate a set of projects that have been designed and agreed to and are therefore ready for implementation funding. So this is a, this is a planning and design grant and it will qualify us for implementation funding under the same program um, once we get it shovel ready. So this is getting some projects shovel ready. Uh, in departmental news, uh, as I wrote to you all earlier, uh, we've gotten our final cherry sheet numbers for the FY21 state budget, the current state budget. The final number is a net increase of $31,918 from the conference committee bill. So we came out pretty well on that one. Net. Um, uh, just also to mention that the uh, small town administrators of Massachusetts sent a letter to the economic bond bill conference committee supporting the establishment of an office of rural policy. Um, which was not, it was, it was in the House bill, it was not in the Senate bill, um, and uh, I sent one myself. Uh, the new round of Community Compact Best Practices grants has been funded, and I expect to apply for two IT-related grants, since we did not get the application we submitted to the IT program approved this year. Uh, which is more competitive than the best practices grants. The assessors would like a tablet for property inspections 
and Roy Cohen, our IT consultant, would like to enhance our cybersecurity. Um, so that's it for non-agenda related news. How about mail? Uh, nothing substantial. So select board, any announcements? Um, well, that that letter, that letter to the, for, to to the Conway Current. Oh yes. So the Conway Current did request that the select board send in uh, might might want to consider sending in a letter for their uh, their New Year's edition. Yes. And, uh, and Phil I has read written. What Phil wrote, and I it looks. Great. <laughs> I totally support. Well, Bill, the fact that you wrote it, thank you very much. <laughs> well, it's no, it's it's from all of us. So. Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> Bill, you make us look good. Uh, uh, honestly, that that's hard know, to do. It, anybody that receives a subscription to the Atlantic magazine will pick up on the uh, plagiarizing immediately. But uh, <laughs> there's uh, like ten of us. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Um, okay. No, I, can, I, can I move that we, um, is that a motion that I should make that we send this to the um, Conway Currents with the select board greeting? Sure, we could make a motion for that and, and I'll second it. <laughs> yes, we, we have a representative of theirs on our call right now. We, we do. <laughs> oh, Louise? Yeah. Yes. Oh, perfect. <laughs> So Louise is saying thank you also. Good. I'll take that as a unanimous. Yes. I heard that, yes. Very well praised, Bill. Thank you. Thanks. So our next meeting is January 4th. And that's going to be a, 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 our first budget meeting. And we'll still hold those by Zoom. And uh, Tom, will that be our, our first meeting of every, every Monday instead of every other Monday? Yep. Starting January 4th? Yes. Yes. Great. <laughs> Great. So do we still have reasons to uh, for executive session? Yes. Okay. So, so I'm going to move that we go into executive session and that we, um, that we leave executive session. Uh, how do you say this properly? That, that when we adjourn from executive session, adjourn, we'll yeah. be adjourning yeah. from this meeting also. And, and give me two minutes. I'll be right back. Okay. So we need to do this by roll call. So Erica. Aye. Uh, you say aye. aye. And, and yeah. Phil? Yes. Aye. And I say aye. Aye. 